back and forth between the notes and your booklet. This is unit four, lesson one, understanding linear equations. So there's going to be nine main types of equations that we're going to deal with. We're going to go back and forth between the types of equations. So the first one here shows, this is our outcome, and it says we want to model and solve problems using linear equations in the form of, and that's what it's talking about, these ones here. And those are the nine types we're talking about. So we're going to number them. The first one is one, two, three, there's nine bullets, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have nine different types of equations, okay? So let's take a look at what they're talking about here. So what does an equal sign actually tell us? Well, an equal sign is actually just a balanced sign. So the equal sign means that whatever you have in your one hand is equal to the weight in the left hand. So if I have two apples in the right hand and maybe one orange in the left hand, and if they weigh the same, they are equal. Okay, so it's like a balance scale. So we're going to talk about each of these. When we're talking about that, we want to compare the left side to the right side of the equation. So that means we want to see if they are equal parts. So I have a 4 and a 3 on the left-hand side, and it says to add them. So 4 and 3 makes 7. Does 7 equal 7? Yes, it does. That's why they're calling it true. So we've got the left side of the equation, and we're trying to see if it equals the right side of the equation. Okay? And that's what we have here. That's what they've done. Because remember, it's like a balance beam. This guy here, 7 subtract 3 now, is not equal to 5. 7 subtract 3 is equal to 4. So because it's not equal, it's false. Okay, so it's not equal, we put a slash to the equal sign. 3 times 4 equals 12. Remember, the equal sign is also the word is. Okay, so we would say 3 times 4 is 12. Very true. The next one, x plus 2 equals 7. This one says it's neither true nor false because x is an unknown. Now, that is very true. We don't know what x is yet. So we don't know if it's true or false. So right now, that's why they're saying it's neither. The minute we say x is equal to a number, then we can say if it's true or false. Okay? Now, when there's an equal sign and we have a variable, that means we're going to be solving for the variable. So logically, what makes sense on the left-hand side for x? 5, right? 5 plus 2 equals 7. So in this case, x should equal 5. Okay. All right. We're going to take a look at the note it tells us. So in your workbook, it says, replacing the variable in the equation x plus 2 equals 7 with a constant that makes the equal sign to be true is said to be the solution. So in this case, x equals 5 is the solution. Okay, so what they're saying is the answer is called the solution. Okay, they're giving it a couple different names. In grade 11, we start learning five different names for the word answer or solution. Okay, so the left side matches the right side. So it's a big matching game here, basically with what they're telling us. So we've got our first big rule here. Now, you guys have been doing, I think, up to four step, three or four step equations in grade eight. So right now we've gotten to the addition principle. Whoa, it's not what I meant to do. Oh, the highlights. The addition principle. So the addition principle states that for any real number, whatever you've got on the left must equal the right, even if the numbers are different. So they're basically saying this that A plus B is equal to what B plus C is equal to. And the reason they're saying that is because they're saying that A mm -hmm. equals B, meaning they are the exact same number. Thank you. Should be in the box already. Okay, A equals B. So let's just say I had a four. Four equals four, okay? Now, if I wanted to put a couple other numbers in there, well, if A equals 4 and B equals 4, that means whatever I add to 4 here, I have to add the same number on the right in order to keep them equal and balanced. So if I add 6 here, I have to add 6 here. So that means I would have 10 equaling 10. Okay? 
So you have the exact same amount on either side. So what this also states is that what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. All right, so in example one, they're showing us the addition principle. So what they've done is they're solving for x, but what they're doing is they're removing the two to the other side. And how do they remove the two? They're doing the opposite function. They're making a zero pair. So what they've done is they've done whatever makes zero on that side. They want it to disappear. So the positive two, I would add a negative two. That makes zero and it disappears. So that means same thing on the right hand side. If I do it to the left, I have to do it to the right. So if I add a negative two to the left, I add a negative two to the right. What happens on the left then is what they cancel out. Okay, they're gonna disappear completely. So those two disappear, and I'm going to end up with the x plus 0. Now, if we understand that they've disappeared, do I have to draw that x plus 0? No, not if you understand they've disappeared. You can just write x equals, okay? You don't have to put the plus 0. And then you would just solve it, okay, for what x is equal to. And then we do what's called a check. Now, the check is always this. We do it as a left side, right side check. So you make a T chart. The line down the middle is the equal side. So on the top of your T chart, you put the left side and the right side. So the left side, I would have an X plus two. Right side, I would have a five. Now I would stick in the number that we found for X. We found X was three, so I'm putting that number in where X was. And now we're going to test to see if the left side equals the right side. So now when I add those, I do get 5. 5 equals 5. So if the left side equals the right side, we call it a true solution. Okay, it's a true solution. In grade 10 and 11, you're going to be getting situations where they're, the left side does not equal the other side. And if that happens, then we don't have a true solution. For us, we're going to be having true solutions all the way, okay, until grade 10 and 11. So, now it says, it's got a really super important note, uh, note, note for us here. Okay, this one here is talking about what if you have x on the other side of the equation. So this one's saying if you end up x on the wrong side. So the wrong side meaning on the right. We always want x to be on the left hand side and the constants to be on the right. So we want x and then a number. And if they've got it backwards, we have to rewrite it the correct way, okay? So because it's an equal sign, that means you can switch whatever's on each other's side completely. That's like me taking a hand sanitizer in my left hand and a Kleenex box in my right hand. And I wanna say, okay, they're on the wrong side of my equation. So I'm going to swap hands, and nothing changed about either of these. They didn't change colors, they didn't change signs, positive or negative, they stayed identically the same. They just swapped places, okay? Now, that's where we can reverse things. So here they're saying negative 3 equals x, they just swapped places, x equals negative 3, okay? So if you end up with a statement such as negative x equals 7, so negative x equals 7, they're telling us we need to divide out a negative 1 or times a negative 1. So basically the rule is this. You always know your answer is simplified when there's a hidden positive 1 in front of your variable that's hiding. If there's a negative sign, that's not a hidden positive 1. That's a negative one. Okay, that's that floater. So that means we've got to divide out that negative one. All we want in front of our x or any variable as we solve them for our final answer is a hidden positive one. That's it. So I'm going to divide out the negative one. 
And all it does is it just changes the sign to the other guy. He swaps sides. That's all it does. Okay? So it just makes the answer the opposite sign. So if the answer was negative, it would have made it a positive answer. Okay? That's what it's telling us. Okay? Any questions so far? Is this ringing a bell from last year? Yeah. Hopefully it is. All right. Let's take a look at the next example. So we've got x on both sides of the equation now. So we want to go through, we want to number which type of equation we have. So on page, on this first page here, example one, I'm just going to go down here and erase a bit of this. On example one, right above it, I want you guys to write type three. So example one is a type three equation. Okay, because remember, in all of our equations, we go back to see which type we're dealing with. We've got nine different types of equations. This guy was a type three that we dealt with. Okay? Is everybody good to go on that? So add type three to that, please. All right. On the top of the next page, we've got a type seven. Now, does everybody have room beside this type three in their workbook? Does everybody have room right here? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, let's just go back to example one. I'm going to put a quick type four up there. There's a small type four example here. So here's type number four. And it's got one number on the bottom of a fraction. And it's going to be type number four. And this is what we're writing down. Okay. So type four has a question like this. X over four plus two equals six. X over four plus two equals six. This is a type four equation. Now, there are two ways to do this equation. We always want to isolate the variable. So is the variable x on the left-hand side by itself? No, we have a few things crowding them. So whenever we solve equations, there's a rule when we take things across that equal side. If we just flip things side to side, we can flip them no problem. But if we want to move just one or two things across the equal side, there's a rule we have to follow, and it's called reverse bed mass. So this is moving across the equal side. It is reverse bed mass. So, and this means to isolate your variable. It's reverse bed mass, to isolate the variable. Okay? To isolate the variable. Okay? All right. So, is our variable x all by itself yet? No. So, what should I do to get my x all by itself? If I look at my bed mass, and I come up from the bottom, the last two letters are A and S, which are add and subtract, which means I do adding and subtracting left to right, whichever comes first. So, that means anything being added or subtracted to your x has to move first. So I have something being added or subtracted to x. Yes. It's got to go across the equal sign first. So we're going to subtract 2. Because when we subtract 2, it's going to disappear on the left. So we're going to subtract 2 to the right. Okay? That's going to give me x over 4 equals 4. Okay? So x over 4 equals 4. Now, if I look and I start going back up on bed mass, we've got the adding, subtracting, nothing is connected by adding or subtracting. Is anything connected by multiplying or dividing? Yes, I have something being connected by a divide line. So we're going to do the opposite of dividing, which is multiplying. If I multiply that side by 4, it cancels. So that means I have to multiply the right-hand side by 4. 
So that's going to give me x equals 60. Okay? And that is the answer, to the solution to my question. And that is a type 4 question. So that's when you've got only one fraction. The rest of the numbers don't have fractions. You've only got one fraction. Okay? So that's a type 4. So, so far we've dealt with a type 3 and a type 4. Top of the next page. Example 2, we're going to deal with a type 7. So we're going to write down type 7 for example 2. So it is a type 7 because it's got x on both sides and it's got a constant on both sides. So whenever we've got variables on either side of the equation, the rule is to move x to the left. So I need to move x to the left. And I also have to move the constant to the right. So first things we do again, we use reverse bed mass to take things across the equal sign. So I'm just going to write bed mass, D-M-A-S. All right, so I look at the bottom two, adding and subtracting. Is there anything being added or subtracted to the question? On the left, yes. Negative three, so that negative three has to move first. So that's why they did negative 3 plus 3. They moved that 3 across. So then they had to add 3 on the right-hand side. Okay? So they moved things across because there was something added or subtracted to the x. Okay? Now I've got an x on the other side of the equation. So now I see 2x equals a 1x. Well, I want x always on the left. So what did they do to the 1x? They subtracted 1x. They made a zero pair. Because 1 subtract 1 gives me 0, which is going to disappear. So that means these guys disappear here as long as I do it to both sides. So I did it to both sides. Here's my subtract 1x right there. So I've got 2x adding a negative 1x. That's going to give me just a 1x. And then I add the digits on the right. 5 and 3 gave me 8. So that's how I end up with my solution of x equals 8. Now, how do I know that I'm fully finished that question? How do you know you're done? Let me get your answer. How do you know that that is my answer? Oh, you just yes. yes, we're going to do a check, but what else? There's a reason I stop. I don't go further. There's a reason. That's right. I'm looking for a hidden positive 1 in front of my variable. And as long as i got a hidden positive 1 in front of my variable, I'm done. So here we've got a hidden positive 1 in front of our variable, we're done. So now to check left side, right side. So you've got room to write your left side, right side, check. So we're going to have 2x, subtract 3 here, and an x plus 5. So that's 2 times the number, subtract 3. Something plus 5. All right. So we said x is 8. So I'm putting 8 where x is on my check. So I've got my left side and my right side. So now I've got to take my 2 times my 8. How big is 2 times 8? 16. 16, perfect. What's 16 subtract 3? 13, wonderful. Now what's 8 plus 5? 13. Did my left side equal my right side? Yes, it does. So, because the left side equals the right side, it's a true solution. Okay, so it does work. All right, so that's a type 7 type of situation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a type 5. So hopefully you've got room. We've got room on the very bottom, or maybe you've got room to the left of this question, or maybe to the right of the question. We're going to do a small little type 5 question. Does everybody have a little bit of room somewhere? New workbook, yeah? Okay. I'm just going to erase my check here. Has everybody got the check written down? Yeah? Okay. So, this guy is going to be a type 5. So, quick little type 5 guy is going to be this. 6x equals 30 plus 9x. So, a type 5 only has x on who? or sorry, has x on both sides, but it only has a constant on one side. The type 7 we see here has an x and a constant on both sides. 
So a type 5 here is one step less. So there's less stuff to do. There's only one number I have to move. What number should I move across the equal sign? What do you think? Okay? That's right. We want to get x's always to the left. So that means we're going to take our 9x to visit the 6x. And the only way we can make him become a 0, I've got a positive 9. What would I add to positive 9 to make 0? Minus 9. Good. So subtract 9x's. They disappear on the right. So I subtract 9x's on the left. Okay? All right. So on the right-hand side, they have disappeared. I add the like terms on the left. That's going to give me negative 3x's equals 30. Negative 3x's equals 30. Now what? I need to move the negative 3 over. Yep, you bet. So do I have anything being added or subtracted to my x? No. Nope. Do I have anything being multiplied or divided to my x? Yes. I have something being multiplied. So how do I remove something being multiplied? You divide. You do the opposite. So I'm going to divide out the negative 3 because he's in the wrong spot. Okay? We're dividing him out. He's gone. So now we're going to get x equals negative 10. Okay? And then we would do our left side, right side check on that. So one last step on this guy because you only had, to, only had to move one number. Okay? Whereas on the a type 7 example, you had to move two numbers. You had to move the constant and you had to move an x. All right. Let's take a look at the multiplication principle. Very similar to what we've been doing, only we're just going to be doing the opposite when we multiply. So, multiplication principle states that a equals b, so therefore a times c is equal to b times c. So they're saying if you multiply a number to one side, you have to multiply a number to the other side. That's what they're saying. So you need to do the opposite to both sides. So you're going to do the opposite to both sides. to remove a number beside or below the variable. Now we're talking about the reciprocal. The reciprocal is the same thing almost as dividing, okay? The reciprocal is when we flip n times when we're multiplying, okay? So flip n times, we do that with reciprocating. Now, yes, we have to know they're called reciprocals, but we typically just do dividing, okay? So that means that there's a number on the bottom. What do I have to do to get the number off the bottom? You multiply it out, okay? You do the opposite. Because it's on the bottom of a fraction, that means being divided. So the opposite of dividing is multiply, okay? All right. A couple more examples coming up. So, now we've got a number sitting in front of x. Okay, this is a typical example, type 1. Here is a type 1 example. Okay, so 3x equals 15 is a type 1. So type 1, one step only. You're looking at something that's got something side by side stuck to x. So if it's side by side stuck to x, that means it's multiplying to x. So how do you get rid of something that's multiplying to x? You divide, you do the opposite. So here's where they're reciprocating. They're multiplying by one third. So what we would do, method one, if you don't like method one, no worries, okay? What I'd like you to remember is do the opposite. This is right here. We divide because b slash c, we are doing the opposite. We do the opposite. Okay, so we do the opposite to remove it. Okay, and that's basically what we've done. All right, example four. 
Example four is a type two. We're going to call him a type number two. He's a type two because he's got something beside X and under X. Okay, so he's a double step, a two step type question. So we've got somebody under X and beside X. Okay, so that's going to change how we do things. So, we do the opposite to each function. So we're going to do it over on the right hand side. We have negative 2x over 3 equals 6. So when we solve this question, they've solved it over here on the left for you. What they've done is they've multiplied by the reciprocal. Okay, that's what they're showing you here. They've flipped the 2 and the 3 and they multiply by it. Okay, multiplying by the reciprocal is the same thing as saying divide out what's in front of x. Okay, now because we've got two different numbers, we're going to do two different steps. Here they can do it all in one step if they just use the reciprocal. Okay, now the reciprocal is very handy if you have more than one number in a fraction. Okay, so typically we usually have the number 1 beside x and a number on the bottom. But here we've got a 2 beside x and a 3 on the bottom. So that means we're going to be doing a couple things. Like I said, if you just do the reciprocal, you'll get the right answer quicker. Okay, but we're going to show the two steps we need to do. So, whenever we're dealing with something beside or under x, we got to get rid of what's under first. Okay, so how do I get rid of something that's sitting under him? You multiply it because the divide line, or sorry, the fraction line means divide. So this guy here to get off the bottom, we would multiply him out to remove him. So we're going to multiply it out. So then we would get negative 2x equals 18. Now we're back to our last step, which is divide by what's in front of x. Okay, divide by negative 2, x equals negative 9. So they got to the answer in one step by just doing the reciprocal. They flipped the fraction. Okay? So you're able to do that if you wish. If not, you can do it with the two steps. Okay? All right. We're going to take a look at example five. Example five on the bottom of your page is a type seven. We're going to write type seven. All right. It's a type 7 because they have x on both sides and they have constants on both sides, okay? So we have to remove the x's. So the x on the right has to go to the left. So that's the very first step. They took the x over. So they subtracted 2x here to remove it. So they subtracted 2x here to remove it or to add it to the other side. Because remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So they subtracted it on the right to remove it. So they subtracted it on the left. Now we had to add those up and we got three X's all together. Okay? So they add them up and got three X. Now we have three X subtract four equals a negative one. Now they have to move that negative four to the right. So this guy's gotta go to the right. And the only way they can do that is by adding four. They need to make it disappear by doing the opposite. So they're going to add 4, it disappears. So we have to add 4 to the other side. They're doing it to both sides. That's super important. So now we're going to get 3x equals 3. Divide by the number in front of x. And we get x equals 1. Okay? And again, we would do our left side, right side check. Any questions with that one? No? All right. We're going to get into our algebra tiles. Oh, yeah. Oh, the Okay. The alpha tile one, both of them, example six and seven, are both type sevens. Okay. So example three, or sorry, four, six and seven. Turn the page, please. Example six and seven are both type sevens. They are both type 7s. And the reason they're a type 7 is because they have x on both sides of the equation. And they have a constant on both sides of the equation. So, what is the first thing they've done? They drew the tiles for each side. 
And remember, the shaded ones are positive. Okay, that's what our workbook says. Shade is positive. So they drew, drew, drew. They drew all of the X's. And what did they do in this second step here? So here's step one. Here's step two. What happened in step two? Um, they canceled the two X. Yes, they canceled the two X right here. So remember, to remove them, you use the opposite color. So two shaded, get rid of two whites. So those guys there, they cancel out and disappear on that side. So remember, if you put two whites on the right, you got to put two white ones on the left, and they did. So now that's going to cancel out two of the shaded ones on the left. That's how I end up with step three. This is what I end up with left. Okay, so step three is then removing all those what's called zero pairs. Okay, so they removed the zero pairs. Now, what are they doing in step four? What are they doing in step four here? What do you notice is going on on the left-hand side? Yes, we have those little guys right there. So, we have three negatives. They added three positives to remove them. So, these guys will disappear here now. But since they added three positives, they got to add three positives to the right. Okay? So now we write down everything that's left over. So now we've got two x's over here, two x, and over here we've got eight. So what you actually do with the algebra tiles is this. However many, um, and what we would do is we would draw them this way, left to right. And what you would do is however many x's there are, you would make that many rows of the little uh, baby squares. And then we show what's called the dividing part. You would cut it in half. It makes exactly two groups. So since you can divide it in two, that means x is equal to four, which is how we end up with our answer, x equals four. Okay? So, for example, if I had a bunch of them, let's just say I had something like this. Let's say I've got three of them. And on the right-hand side, I've got... Well, I'm not going to draw my six like one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to draw it like that. And I'm not going to draw it like one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not going to draw it labeled like this. I have to draw it labeled like this. And the reason is because the X's tell you how to draw it. My X's are left and right, and I've got three of them. So that means I need to split up all my babies into three parts. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure everybody gets an equal part. So basically what you do is you make rows according to how many you have left over. Okay? So this question right here, I'd be able to divide it like this. So that means in this case, x would equal 2 in this little example I'm showing. But if we had them all drawn like this, we would have no idea how to divide these little guys up. Okay, so we divide them up and we organize them according to what the left looks like. Okay, so that's super important there. All right, let's take a look at number six. Sorry, let's example seven. Pardon me. Hard to say today. Okay, more algebra tiles. So again, what have they done? They've added the opposites. So opposite colors are going to make things disappear. So. They have a white X on the right-hand side. Well, what are you noticing? Are they taking X to the left or to the right this time? They're taking X to the right this time. Does it matter? It will eventually. X should always be on the left. Now, if we take X to the right, all we got to do is switch our answer in the end because we have an equal sign. We can do that. But coming up in the inequality section, it's going to matter. So, we're going to show the example where they take x to the right, but we're going to remember to always take x to the left. So, they've got two white x's, they're going to put two shaded x's. That gets rid of them over on the left. So, that means they have to add them up on the right. They do the same thing. Well, these two guys will cancel. I end up with one x left over. Okay? Now, on the right-hand side, they need to get rid of all those four baby guys. 
So they're going to put four little white ones. So that's how they disappear on the right, and then they put them over on the left. And then they have to count up how many cancel out. So opposite colors are going to cancel out. They get one little guy left over. So they end up with x equaling a negative 1. Okay? So x equals negative 1. Now, we're going to go into um, the notes that I gave you in just a moment. We're going to talk about page 199 in just a sec here. Everybody pretty good with these so far? Kind of, sort of. It'll take practice, don't you worry. We got lots of time to practice. Okay, so over here it's talking about applications. Applications are basically word problems. Okay? So we have to translate verbal sentences into math symbols. So we're going to see how that works. So in your workbook it's showing us this. So addition has a couple different names. So if you're a highlighting person for underlining, I would highlight or underline these words. So addition, you're going to find sum, more than, added to, or increased by. Every single one of those phrases mean addition, okay, that you're adding. We'll look at the same thing for subtraction. So we have less than, minus, and decreased by. Those all mean subtracting something. Multiplying, we use times, percent of, the word of, twice, and product of. So over here, percent should be actually, should just be the word of. Of means multiply and not. And for dividing, the ones that mean dividing are half, quotient, quotient. Okay? So again, quotient is pretty much division. Half of quotient. All right. We have a couple more examples dealing with decimals. And then we're getting into our other booklet. Okay. Ready, Betty? Okay, let's try these ones. So, it says the sum of 13 and 3 consecutive even integers. Oh my gosh. We have a couple different words up here. What does the word consecutive mean? What does it consecutive mean? Not keeps on going. Consecutive means right after each other. Okay? So in a row, in a row right after each other. So it says the sum of 13 and three consecutive integers. So the digit 13, here's our digit 13, and three consecutive, but it's saying even integers. Is, is means equals 43. So we have our equals and our 43. So, so far we figured that part out. But we're saying the integers. So the integers are telling us that they've got to be even numbers. So let's say my first even number is 10. What's my second even number? After 10. I'm counting even numbers. I start at 10. What's my next one? 12. Then what? 14. 14. From 10, how did I get to 12? I added two. From 10, how do I get to 14? Added four. So that's how those become x. That would be my number 10. x plus 2, that would be my 12. x plus 4, that's my 14. So that's where they're getting these x, x plus 2, x plus 4s from. Okay? So, the third integer. So you always have to give yourself a little legend. So we would always have a legend. And we say x equals the first number, x plus 2 is the second number, and x plus 4 is the third number. Okay, so we would write a legend down. 
for almost every word problem. All right, and then we string them out in a row and we add like terms. So what we've got over here is we've got three different x's plus the two, plus the four, plus the 13. So we added the two, the four, and the 13 and got 19. So now we have to remove the 19. Remember, the 19 belongs with the constants on the right-hand side. So they removed him by going subtract 19, that made zero. So he removed. Now you've got 43 subtract 19, that's going to give us 24. So now what we do, we divide by what's sitting in front of x. So we would have 3x equals 24, divide out what's in front of x, we get x equals 8. So if our first number was 8, we would have 8, 10, 12. Okay? Because we want three consecutive even numbers. What if I said three consecutive odd numbers? Would that change? The x and x plus 2 and x plus 4 would not change. What about if I said consecutive numbers, not even or odd? That would change this part. That would change these guys. Instead of it being x plus 2 and x plus 4, it would just be x plus 1 and x plus 2. Because if I said consecutive numbers right in a row, maybe my first number was a 5. How do I get to the next number from 5? How do I get to 6? Add 1. So I would have x plus 1 here. And then how do I get from 5 to 7? Add 2. So you have x plus 2. So if they were numbers right in a row, you wouldn't have plus 2 and plus 4. You'd have plus 1 and plus 2. Okay? The reason it's plus 2 and plus 4 is because it's every even number, where, which means you're counting by 2s. Or if it's odd numbers, you're counting by twos. Okay? That's what that's talking about. All right. Let's talk about example nine. We're almost done. Don't worry. I know you're bored so late. Okay. So we're talking about ages. So this one says, we have a husband is two years older than his wife, and their son is half the age of the mother. If the sum of all their ages is 97. How old is the son? Well, you have to let X be one of them. So they let X be the mom. So we have mom equals X, dad equals mom plus two years older. So X plus two. And the kid is what? Mom divided by two, right? X divided by 2 is the mom, or the kid. So here we've got mom plus dad plus kid is equal to 97. Okay? One half X is the same thing as saying X over 2. Okay? So this over here means the same thing as that, X over 2. So now we're going to add up all of our X's. So we've got 1, 2, and then a half. So we have 2.5x's. That's what 5 over 2 is. So right here we've got 2.5x plus 2 equals 97. So now we're going to move the 2 to the right. All I did was change the 5 over 2 into 2.5. I just changed it to an exact decimal. Because it's an exact decimal, you can change it. All right. So now we're moving the 2. I need the zero pair of the two. How do I remove a positive two? Subtract two. So we're going to get 2.5x equals 95 because these guys are going to disappear. My last step is to divide by what's in front of x. So I would divide by 2.5. Here, because it's a fraction, what did they do? They did that reciprocal. Whenever you see them taking a fraction and flipping it, that's called the reciprocal. And that means the same thing. You would do that, absolutely. So divide by 2.5, this just saves us one step. So how big is x? We're going to get x is 38. So mom is 38 years old. 
The kid is half that age, so he's 19, and dad is two years older. How much is dad? Four. Four. Good job. All right. Last example in your book. In your book. Example 10. So a board is 70 meters in length, and I'm going to cut it into two pieces. One piece is eight shorter than the other. Or pardon me, eight shorter than three times the other piece. Find the length of the two piece, two pieces. So we're saying X is going to be the short one, and we're going to have three X minus eight is the long one. So we have a short piece and a long piece. Now, how do I get the three X minus eight? Ooh. Well, let's say my piece is exactly, let's just say my piece is exactly 12. Let's say the entire piece is 12. And I want to say that the other piece is that eight centimeters shorter, so minus eight, than three times the other piece. Okay, then three times the small one, the other piece is the small one. So it would be three X, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so basically what we're just showing is how to create that 3x minus 8, okay? So you're basically writing out what they're telling you in words. So 3 times means 3x, okay? Now the longer piece is 8 centimeters longer, okay, minus 8, okay? Or sorry, I, it is longer by 8 and 3 times more. So... We have to take the entire piece is going to be short piece plus long piece. So we've got short plus long equals 70. Okay, so short piece plus the long piece is 70. The short one is x. Okay, the long one is 3x minus 8. And that's how we create the equation. Okay, so it's short plus long. So They've got the equation created here. We add the x's, we get four x's. Now they got to take the 8 to the right. He's a negative 8, so they have to remove it by adding 8. That gives us 0 on the left. So now we're going to get four x's. After they add those, is 78. So 78 now divided by the 4 is going to give us 19.5. So x equals 19.5 and what is it centimeters yep so that means the short piece is 19.5 now we would put it into the equation here we would go three times 19.5 subtract eight and that's going to equal the long piece and when we do that we're going to get 50.5 okay so that's going to give us 50.5 centimeters for the long piece Okay, we're just plugging in x, the number we got for x, okay? Now we're going to look at what's called the box strategy. The box strategy, they have not put in your notes, so that's why it's additional. It's in the new little notes that I gave you. The box strategy, I still have grade 11s and 12s using it because they find it very helpful. So, the box strategy, we are going to do our first example. So we need to make a note for our box strategy. Here is our note. <clears throat> okay. It cannot be used with X on both sides. X has to be moved to the left before you can use this strategy. So X must be moved to the left first before you use this strategy. Okay. I'll give you a moment to write that down. 
Okay, so let's write this first box strategy question down. So we're going to have three x. Let's go four x equals twelve. We're going to do four x equals twelve. So what we do with the box strategy is how we know how many boxes we use is according to how many things we see surrounding x on the left side of the equation. So we always check to see if x is on the left, and yes it is. So now we see how many things are crowding x. Well, we only have x and a digit. So that's why we've got two different boxes. So our first box is always the variable by itself. In the bottom right-hand corner is the answer, 12. We put equal signs between the boxes. And now on top of the arrow, we write down what happened to x. So we're creating the equation, then we're going to undo the equation. So x was multiplied by 4 to become a 4x. Okay? Then what we do is on the bottom of our arrow, we do the exact opposite. Well, I times by 4, so now I'm going to divide by 4. So now I'm going to get 3. Your final answer will always be in the first two boxes on the left. So x equals 3. Okay? We'll do a couple more like that. Okay? A couple more quick examples. So, first one is always x. Bottom right is always the answer on the right, 20. I put my equal signs in where they go. And then we always write down what's happening to x. So, x was times by negative 3 to give me a negative 3x. So we always deal with what's sitting beside x and under x first. Then we deal with what's being added or subtracted. So then we added 5. So we got a negative 3x plus 5. You're going to notice the entire equation will always end up on the right-hand side. That's the entire equation. Now we're going to work backwards. So the opposite of adding 5 is subtracting 5. So now I take 20 and subtract 5, I get 15. What is the opposite of timesing by negative 3? Dividing by negative 3. We're going to get a negative 5. So now we know x equals, our answer right here, x equals negative 5, final answer. Okay? Let's try this last example here. Alrighty. That first one go okay for everybody? Who's going to go in the top left box? X. Who goes in the bottom right? 19. Good. We're going to put our equal signs in. And now we're going to start solving. Alright. What's the first thing that happened next? Who's beside him? It was times by negative 2 to give us negative 2x. Then what happened next? They subtracted 7. So we say negative 2x subtracts 7. Now we're going to work backwards. What's the opposite of subtracting 7? Adding 7. We get 26. What's the opposite of timesing by negative 2? Divide. Divide by negative 2. What's 26 divided by negative 2? Negative 13. So we say x equals negative 13 all day long. Okay, so on this slide what we're trying to talk about is we are going to be arranging to solve equations. So we've got 5x plus 8 equals 7x's. So our x's are the boxes. So basically what we have to do is we have to take away as many as we can from both sides. So who's got the most? The right hand side has the most. So that means we're going to be taking away from the left. So I have five boxes I could take away. I'm going to take five boxes away on the other side. So that means I have two x's left, but I'm going to stack them. So now you're going to rearrange the little zeros on the left. So let me draw my boxes. I'll bring the two boxes that are left. And then we got our ones. Now remember, we're going to arrange our ones so that each box gets an even amount. So each box needs to have 
eight, or sorry, four for a total of eight. Sorry. Okay, so now we divide them evenly up. They're standing tall on the left hand side. But the reason we had to divide them up is so that we can literally divide them in half. So now we would say 2x equals 8, and after we've divided it, we prove that one of the x's equals 4. Okay, so we want to line them up in a row. Let's try the second one. We're going to do the exact same thing with the second example. So, how many x's can I take away? Three of them. So three of them are going to go off the top. So that means I've got two x's left. And on the left hand side, I've got three circles. So I can take three circles away here and three circles away on the right. Which means I have four little circles left over. Well, four I need to divide evenly into two groups. So I've got it divided evenly into my two groups. So I end up with 2x equals 4. Now I divide my grouping equally, I get x equals 2. This concludes lesson 4.1, linear equations.